Yeah, I'm actually mixing color right now. So there, there are certain color that, that you can use. A lot of people use Beijing for the beard. The correct name is Began. But, um, you know, it, it says on the box you're not supposed to put it on the face. And people can have a, a chemical reaction, actually. And, um, you know, it, it can go really, really bad. So this is a different type of color that I'm using for the session that I'm doing today. And this is um, actually just for men color. So it's, it's not abrasive and it's made more for the man's skin. But some people it can irritate as well, but you always read the box before you use it and just mix it real good so that it can sit and kind of oxidize, so to speak. All right. So make sure that, and some people don't do that. They don't properly pick and comb out the hair and neither do they properly pick and comb out the beard. They just kind of, they just kind of start cutting, if you will. So for this gentleman right here, we're going to color his Kanishis. I'll give y'all a minute to try and figure out what Kanishis is. What is Kanishis? 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 What am I talking about? That's just a professional name. It's a respectful name for gray hair. <laughs> so we're going to attempt to color his Kanishis today. So, and also the thing with color is, is that, so what I'm doing, I'm not coloring it first. A lot of people, when they do beards, they just, they just kind of cut down on the beard or just cut up on the beard. But a beard is actually like doing a haircut, right? Especially if it has certain deficiencies. So, you know, and what I mean by when it has certain deficiencies, it's like you have to make sure that there's a graduation in the beard as well. Especially if somebody wearing, if somebody's wearing a, like a clean shaved head, a bald head. A lot, I see a lot of people who take the bald head and they just, there's no, there's no fade in between the, the baldness going down into the beard. But I like to make sure that there's a clean distinction between, you know, where, it, where it's bald at and then fade into the beard. So that's what I'm doing right now. There are four classifications of color. You have temporary, you have semi-permanent, you have demi-permanent, and you have permanent. So a lot of people assume that people who are getting color on, let's just say Beijing, right? So some people think that Beijing is a temporary color, but it's not a temporary color. It's more of a, a semi-demi-permanent color closer to permanent color but the reason that we think the reason that we think that it's it's uh temporary is because we put we put it on hair that's low so whether it's the head or the beard and because we put it on hair that's low we cut it out and it grows out and then you know they need the color right away but if you put it on hair that's long then the only areas that will still need color um is the, the roots of the hair when that grow back. But then the, the rest of the hair still has the color in there. So just kind of giving you a little bit why it seems like you have to do the color every, every single time. And that's the reason why. And applying color, so let's just say Beijing. It says on the box, do not apply this to somebody's face. And before you do color, you're supposed to do a, a, a patch test. So a patch test with color basically, and it's supposed to be a 24 hour patch test, and a patch test would determine if that person will have an allergic, an allergic reaction to the color. If a person have an allergic rea reaction to the color, you don't want to use that color on them because you can literally be, and this may sound kind of harsh, but you can be responsible for somebody's death in your chair. That's why it's vital us as uh, you know, licensed professionals that's why we should be licensed and understand, you know, the, the dynamics of, of what it truly means, you know, to apply color, to apply relaxer and, you know, different diseases and different things that can be transferred just by cutting hair. That's what their red, white and blue barber pole is for. So just kind of giving you a little education about that. And then there's a 12 step uh, color system as well um, that you, you know, you guys who are barbers, y'all know what I'm talking about. You get a little bit deeper into that, but there's a 12-step color system. All right?
right now is, is that I'm just kind of pre-lining, not completely. I'm pre-lining, but I'm going to use some, so the difference between, so you have Maximus Man, Revitalizing, Lining, and Fro Spritz. So this is used for linings, and I'm going to tell you what I do. So close your, um, close your, yeah. So this sprays out differently. Watch the mist on it. Oops. There you go. Watch the mist. So there's more of a mist than the stream. So normally, because of this right here, normally it sticks and then it, it streams out. But because of the fact of the substance that's made in here, and it's a secret, so we can't tell y'all what that secret is, all right? But there's a substance that this is made out of that makes it where every time it comes out, it mists instead of make a stream. So that's very, very important. Is there a reason you prefer the mist over the stream? I prefer the mist over the stream because it covers it covers more area and um yeah and, and it's not so heavy it's not like sticky because you have to still worry about um you know getting your clippers clogged up we don't want to get our clippers and our liners clogged up so and some people may feel like well if you have if your liners are lined to part you know like why do you need the 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 lining spritz right well, it's, it's just, it makes it peel off more, you know, a little easier is what that does. It makes it peel off easier and it gives for a, a, better, uh, a better foundation for when you line the hair. So, because you know, you can have a great fade, but if your lining is not on point, you can hang it up. That's just honest. And then we go deal with the the co chief. A lot of people don't know what that is up in there. You got the goatee, and then you got the co chief. So, this right here is called the co chief, and this is the goatee. And again, I'm not doing it to perfection, only because of the fact that I'm going to use a razor on there. I'm just making sure that I have a, a clean palette for me to put the color on so that way I won't over color it and put color on hair that I don't want to stain. I only want to put color in the areas that I want to stain. When you're shaving a whole head you have your your free hand strokes and you have your backhand strokes. So the way I'm lining this beard right now is sort of like a a backhand stroke. You have some people who use both hands when they're doing a full shave. Like I used to use both hands when I was giving somebody a complete facial shave um, just because I chose to. But that's why having a, the barber chair and the way it spin, you're supposed to make the client, whether it's their face or their head, you make it come to you. So you spin a chair around so that way you can stay behind your station. So now we're gonna apply the color. I gotta use gloves because as you can see, I get my hands manicured, man. So, you know, I can't, can't get no color on my hands. So, to each his own. I, I like to use the glove that's, that comes in the, the color box, but I use the other ones, but I don't mind using these too. All right. So, my color. When I first mixed it, y'all seen that it was a, a different color. So I had to literally let it, I had to allow it to properly, you know, oxidize so that way it can form the color that I needed it to form, all right? So let's start applying the color. So I'm applying it with the application brush. And again, because of, I've already made you know, made the palette for for where I'm going to apply the color. I won't be too far off. And for me, I start in I start in areas as it relates to, like, just say, over the lip, because you you can't keep it on there for a, 
a long, long time, but I make sure that I put it in areas that that I want to take really, really good in the beginning. And then you don't want it to dry. You don't want it to dry inappropriately in areas that you don't want the color to stain in. So I kind of have a method to my madness and y'all will see. And I like to try and make it where I don't have to, I don't have to wipe anything down or, you know, like getting on the lip or, you know, so I try and do my best to stay within the lines that I created. Is there a preference to why you started at the top? Well, I started in that area again. I started at the top, like I just mentioned, because of the fact of that's where you want it to, to have the, mo the most, I mean, you want it to be effective all the way around, but you know, you want it to stain mostly in the areas that you want that, you know, you really want it to be extra sharp, if you will, for lack of a better way to put it. So. And you got to make sure that it goes all the way down to, to the skin, if you will. So you got to apply enough color and you can see whether or not it does it or not, right? So then up in this area, I kind of, I don't make the color so thick, but again, when you're putting the color on, you still got to make sure that you're, you're kind of fading it as well. And I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, so what I do is I do that half first, and then I take, I use a sanding strip, and I pretty much take and I fade the color from the, the clean shaven head to make sure that there's no heavy line of demarcation between the beard where I applied the color and the, and the bald head. So it's like I'm kind of blotting and fading with, with the sanding strip. And you'll see how this go dry. And then I take and get the excess color that might have went on other part of the skin. I get that with, with the razor. So I come behind with the razor in order just to make it sharp. So I'm not really sure how other people do it. But again, I'm using the razor in these areas because I've already lined it with the liners, so I'm just pretty much cleaning it up, but making it where my lining from the color is sharp and on point. You gotta make sure you pull that skin. A lot of people, especially, you know, unfortunately, new age barbers, they really don't properly know how to use a razor. And I'm dry razoring right now. We used to use the shaving gel back in the day, um, which, you know, you still can use it to each his own but I prefer to dry shave. When I'm doing beards and linings, I prefer to dry shave. That's just me. We don't want to mess up our art and what we did. So when we put the gel on there, it's just a different vibe nowadays. See how sleek that is? And then you come behind. So I'm, I'm pulling his ear, but you come in behind and you're pulling the opposite way. You always want to pull the skin tight. Always want to pull the skin tight. And you got to really take advantage of your, so this, this is a, so you have a conventional razor and you have a disposable razor. This is considered a disposable razor and like a door coat. So I, I like to use the long um, persona razors as well, the full complete razor, but this is a door coat, so it's, kind of half that, but make sure take advantage of your tang. So this is your tang right here. So take advantage of that and push it through the other way when you're in certain areas in order to properly be able to get to the area you need without cutting your client. Is that why you prefer that type of razor? Because it's going back 
No, I can use any kind of razor. That's, you know, that's what razors that, yeah. And, and then two conventional razors, conventional razors, they swing all the way back too. They fold all the way in, right? Uh, old story, when I first started barber school, I was giving my dad a shave and I was using a razor and I accidentally closed the razor this way and pushed my thumb on there and, and sliced my thumb because I shut it the wrong way. <laughs> but it's supposed to close in like that, even before you hand somebody the razor, right? So if you hand, let's say in barber school, if I hand a student a razor, I'm supposed to close the razor and hand it to him. You don't hand nobody a razor and it's open like that, right? Unless you plan on doing something, you don't have no business doing <laughs> So I could have, now, I could have went either way. I could have went this way when doing his mustache on his side, right? I could have went that way, but because of the fact that I try and make things easier for me, I kind of go against the grain a little bit. So I like to come and do it from this angle because it gives me a better, and I pull the skin and just give, gives me a better way to get it really, really good. Making myself comfortable and making sure the client don't get cut. All right. So then I'm gonna go do inside of the goatee on the part that I did. And I'm just pretty much pulling up. Now, if you notice, the Cochise, I didn't do that yet because I need to use that area in order to kind of manipulate the skin in order to be able to get inside. And if I were to put color on there, then I would have been getting color on my, on my gloves, on my hands, if you will. So that's why I chose to do that first, just so y'all can understand, like, you know, my process. All right. Now I'm gonna do the other side. And I'm starting at the top. And then when I, when I apply the color, it's like I don't, because I'm putting it on a brush, I start kind of brushing it on the other part of the beard first before I get closer to the lining. So that way it won't be too much that goes where the lining is, and I won't have so much color to kind of take away, so. And I draw too, I'm an artist, y'all, so I might have an advantage of some of y'all who don't know how to draw and write real, real good. I know how to draw, and I have great penmanship, so, you know, I'm pretty good at being precise with, uh, it's a poor dog that don't wag their own tail. That's right. Somebody just said that. I say it all the time. I mean, it is what it is. What, what else can you do about it? You know what I'm saying? I do what I do. Mad about it? Speaking of truth. <laughs> and for, for some people that didn't know that you can overprocess people's hair and their color as well. It can definitely be overprocessed. And um and if you don't apply the color quick enough after you've mixed it, it can overoxidize and and not work. What's overprocess what's that? Overprocess. It can so it has an oxidation process. And with the oxidation process, if if it's oxidizing and and you haven't applied it it can completely oxidize because it's supposed to oxidize on the person's face in order to be able to work completely or their hair, if you will, since we're talking about color as a whole, right? So with that being said, if it over oxidizes, let's just say before you apply the color, then you can put the color on and the color won't work because it's completely oxidized. That's why when you first mix the color, you have two different colors. So the colors have to work first in order for you to be able to properly, you know, I guess see what color it is and then you apply it. You can apply it before it completely oxidizes, but I mean, I don't prefer to do that. I prefer to, you know, do it after it's kind of start changing to its, its natural color form first. But if you just let it sit in the bowl, let's just say all day, you say I'm gonna use that in about an hour, it's not gonna be no good. Especially if it's not, you know, wrapped in some plastic or something that's protective in order to help it where it won't oxidize out 
and it won't be any more good. It'll just be a dark color that when you apply it, it won't work because the oxidation period is pretty much done. Put a shampoo cape on because of the fact that you know it's water resistant right basically so a lot of people are confused on how do i get the color out the beard you know if i'm not doing it myself and over shampoo bowl so i just normally have them stand to the side and i do it like that right so i'm trying to do it without making a mess so is that water okay mm -hmm. all right so you pretty much got to get the color out and you hold it close to the face so that way there's you know you're, you're more than likely not going to get it everywhere when you kind of smash it to the face almost a little bit. Now I'm going to use some Maximus Beard Oil Infused Beard Wash. And you don't need a whole lot. Now this is important because a lot of people, you know, when they wash their face, you're not supposed to use soap. You're supposed to use the right product in order to wash your face. Especially if you have a beard. You want to use the right products in order to be able to do that. So Maximus Man beard wash that's infused with oil is, is very vital because when you open up the pores, you know, you want to be able to close them back up and you want it to be healthy when you close it back up and you want it to have moisture when you close it back up. Turn this, turn this way, Joey. I'm gonna make sure you get all the dye out. All right, and then you kind of massage, use your your finger, the cushions of your fin fingertips, massaging the skin as well while you're getting the, while you're shampooing the beard. All right, Joey, this side first, yep. Close your mouth. Other side. All right, go get a towel. And I normally get a client the towel so they can dry it to their liking. That's what I do. And then I finish it just to make sure that they, nothing gets on it. And then you have the, you actually have the, the moisturizer relief conditioner, but I don't want to use the conditioner today, but you use the conditioner basically just to kind of relieve any, you know, any irritation, if you will, that there would be. So this is what this is for right here, all right? Start and shampooed everything out. Now I want to use a little. So this is a little leave-in beard conditioner from Maximus Man. All right. So we're just going to apply a little bit of that, so that way the beard can stay moisturized. Just a little bit. And it smells good too. See what color that is? Look at that. It smells so good. It's amazing. All right. Now. Go pick it out because you want to shape it and some people just take the color out and then they're done, but you're not done yet. Did you know that you can still use enhancements if you choose to? He don't need it, but I'm just kind of showing you that 
you can put enhancements on the beard. And for me, it's just a little extra additive that I like to do. It's not gonna make too much of a difference, but I like to do it. Sometimes, depending on how deep the grays are, the kanishis, it may not completely, completely like, get on there, but I just like to do that. And then you go back over with the razor. Add that finishing touch to it. This is just pretty much complementing the color that you've done already. Make sure everything is everything. I didn't realize how cold I was, man, until the day. <laughs> That's what I do. You feel me? Don't judge me, y'all. I'm not being arrogant. It's just what it is. I mean, you know, poor dog don't wag their own tail. It's just so crispiness. I'm just having fun, y'all, so don't eat the fish and spit out the bones, TV land. Don't say, I knew that dude was arrogant. I knew it. No, it ain't. So, so stop it now. You hear me? I just love what I do. That's all. I just love to, I love to make people look good and and feel good to the best of my ability and like to have fun. This is the place where where people come to let their ha hair down. It's, the shop is a safe haven. Barbershop, beauty shop should be a safe haven. Father, daughter, mother, son, grandmother, grandfather, everybody should feel comfortable. Now you might ask, like, why are you going back over it again if you already did it with the with the razor already? Well, I'm just complimenting, you know, after I do the shampoo and add the beard conditioner and all of that stuff, I just still want to make sure that it's sleek and still has the precision to it, like it just got done. All right, hold your lip down, Joey. kind of the opportunity to kind of stand on what you did already and take advantage of both ends of the razor front and back I get the inside by the cold cheeks And then you want to shape it. So some people like for it to hang and be straggly. So I'm just going to pretty much get the loose ends. But I got my clippers all the way closed. Some people have it open. No, that's not the right way because you have too much blade. You want to close it all the way. So I'm just going to shape it so that the form can be more identified and, act, and it'll accentuate 
the shape of the beard and the lining and everything. I'm not gonna perfect it too much because he likes to have it a little straggly, but I wanna get it and at least make it look neat. Hold up, Joey. So here's the thing I haven't did, you know, I don't cut hair full time anymore. So, you know, Joey's been kind of, he ha he's had to conform to doing it himself. So for, for those of you who may figure like, well, why, you know, why isn't, why isn't it full in certain areas? I didn't do it. Joey did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like underneath and all of that kind of stuff. So I had to get it back to where he needed to be because he was low key kind of going chin strap a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So. Y'all remember what I said about them chin straps? So now y'all see why I can cost so much to do the beard and to dye it and do all that like it don't stop just after the lining or the color or the shampoo you know you still got work you got to do to it so this is like a whole haircut literally along with the haircut that you've already done you got to make sure yeah 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 you got to make sure everything is everything yeah well it took me longer today because of the fact that i'm doing the, the video but normally i can knock it out quick, fast, in a hurry, but doing a little bit more explaining. Because once you've been doing it for a while, you know, it's it's like second nature. All right. And there you have it. Good morning. There you have it. We got the whole complete look. Whole complete look. So, what we'll top it off with... So I'm gonna take a Sanic strip. Excuse the towel not being folded up if y'all seen that. But I'm gonna take this Sanic strip. So you have Maximus Man bump stopper gel, right? So some people may say, what is the bump stopper gel for? We open up the pores, but we don't close the pores back up. So when we shave, whether it be with a razor, if we shave, uh, whether it be with a, um, a pair of clippers and some electric shavers, you have to close the pores back up. And you have to shave um, enough so that way, because our hairs don't go straight out. Our hairs curl up. So when people get uh, folliculitis and, you know, different bumps and stuff like that, blackheads, pustules, or whatever the case may be, that's because the skin is not properly treated, right? So when I shave, I always apply the bump stopper afterward in order just to kind of conceal, if you will, what, what I've taken out and then I want to put back in. So I'm gonna use the bump stopper for underneath. So you have the Maximus Man. This is actually the, it's like the calming antiseptic lotion, right? So it's almost like after, you know, you get a, let's just say you, you get a cut or something like that, right? Even though there's not a cut, but he's been having clippers and razors and everything like that applied to his face. So what you want to happen is, is that you want to soothe it. You want to calm it down. You want to bring it back to its natural state, but still, you know, maintaining the moisture. So I'm going to use a little bit of this. So it kind of has like a sea breeze type vibe. And put it in areas that I use the razor just so it can soothe and calm the skin. I'll put it up there too. You can use it for a bald head. 
you know, I did that before time, but all right. I thought I was praying for you for a minute, Joey. I kind of felt like I was praying for you, man. All right. All right. So we are complete. It's complete. Y'all good. Thank y'all for listening and looking. Hopefully y'all learned something. Stay tuned for the next video that I'll be making for y'all. All right.